Welcome to the GoVenture Typing tutorial video. GoVenture Typing is a fun and engaging game that teaches keyboarding to beginners and reinforces proper technique for experienced typists. It's designed for use in schools or at home or work. The game combines fantasy genre storytelling like Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings to create an epic quest where survival and success depend on your keyboarding skills. Let me show you how it works. So when you first launch GoVenture Typing, if this is your first time, you'll start a new, new game. If you've already been playing, you'll resume that, that game. So we immediately meet Ruzak the Wise. That's the king's wizard who's going to guide us on our quest and train us uh, for various challenges along the way. We will do our quest using a map that Ruzak provides. So right now we're in section one of the map. You can see at the very bottom here there's going to be five sections that will be revealed as we complete the map. There's a trail uh, indicated on the map. As you can see here I'm following uh, the trail with the mouse. And as I complete each of the modules, each of the, the tasks, I will uh, reveal the next section of the map in order to continue my quest. Now when I first uh, start uh, the game, it begins with a skill test and the premise of the skill test is to identify what our typing speed is right now and what we would like it to be when we complete the game. So let me go ahead and click on skill test and by the way you cannot complete any of these others, you cannot do any of these other uh, tasks until they light up and, um, and uh, they will do so in order of sequence. So, we, um, we will begin the skill test. Ruzak is uh, asking us to uh, type at as fast as we can while making as few mistakes as possible. So, you know, we want to limit the number of mistakes we made be make because that will slow us down because we have to correct our mistakes. So let's go ahead and start the skill test. And uh, every screen in the game will start with some type of help overlay like you see here that explains the different sections of the screen. As soon as you click it will go away and you can also bring it back at any time by clicking the orange question mark which is our help button and that brings it right back up. Um, so uh, every drill or challenge will begin uh, paused and waiting for you to begin typing. Usually there's going to be some type of uh, of timer or other measure. In this case, in the skill test, you'll see there's a 45 second timer that will begin counting down as soon as I begin typing. Next to the timer is a words per minute or WPM um, speed. And so in this game, we're measured by how many words per minute we can type. And that's ultimately how typing is measured and our goal in uh, that typing speed. And of course the words per minute have to be correct words. In the scroll in the middle shows what we need to type and uh, we start with the first letter which is an uppercase or capital uh, T which is normally created by holding the shift key down and pressing the letter T. And you'll notice there's a little green triangle that indicates the letter that we're supposed to be typing at the moment. And that green triangle will move forward as you type. Uh, notice there's also spaces in between the words, which means you have to press the space bar uh, at that point. If you make a mistake, uh, the, uh, uh, you'll see a red X and uh, a red underscore or red letter where you made the mistake, and you'll press the back, uh, backspace button to try that again. It will not let you continue until you correct that mistake, and I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, you'll also see at the bottom here a, a representation of your keyboard and you'll see highlighted the, uh, the keys that you should be pressing at the moment. So for a uppercase or capital T, you'll notice it's the shift and the letter T are highlighted. So every time you're supposed to click particular keys, you'll see it highlighted on the keyboard. You'll also notice these hands or gloves, which are called gauntlets back in, the, in medieval times. And uh, the gauntlet will show you which finger you should be using to press uh, the keys. So in the case of the letter T, it's left hand uh, index finger. In the case of the shift, it's right hand pinky finger. Now it's very important that you try to follow these specific guides uh, and techniques because it will improve your typing speed and give you more uh, proper technique and proper technique 
will allow you to type faster. If you stray from the technique, you'll still probably be able to type relatively fast, but certainly not as fast as following proper proven technique. So this is a skill test. We're ready to begin the skill test. And uh, as soon as I begin typing, it will start. And let's do that. So you'll notice the letters that I'm correctly typing are turning blue. Oh, I just made a mistake on the O. I have to press the back space to clear that mistake and then continue typing from where I left off. And I just will want to type quickly, but at a speed that minimizes the number of mistakes I made. There's a G with a little X. I made a mistake on the G. I will go back. It will not let me continue until I correct that. And so let's continue the speed test. Now you'll notice in this case, the scroll has uh, scrolled up to reveal more words for me to type. So there we go. The typing skill test has ended and it's showing my uh, achievement. So my current speed in words per minute, WPM, is 36. And now it's recommending a goal of 46. Now I can adjust that goal to any number that I want, but I want to be careful that I don't want to choose a number that's too high because that may be too difficult for me to achieve that goal, or a number that's too low because that may not be challenging enough and may not improve my typing uh, skills as much as I should. Now uh, you can return to the skill test at any time and adjust uh, the goal. You can retake the skill test and adjust the goal, so if you want to uh, adjust it up or down, you can do so. But keep in mind that if you do adjust the goal, it is uh, reflected in your performance report, so it is logged when you do change your goal. And if you're doing uh, this typing uh, game as part of a course, you may be required to achieve a certain uh, speed level, and you want to make sure that you don't change your goal to something that uh, is not acceptable uh, for your program or course. So make sure you uh, follow those instructions. And um, uh, we can also see the problem letters, any particular letters I had uh, challenges with, you'll, uh, they'll appear here. But in this case, I'm going to just leave the goal at 46 and click Continue. And I've just earned an achievement. And in the game, you'll find that there's a, a number of achievements. You can see most of them are grayed out here because uh, I have not earned them yet, but I've earned the skill test uh, achievement. And I can scroll through to see the other uh, mystery achievements that I have yet to achieve. So we're taken right back to the uh, map and now I can start my training. You can see the next uh, mission in our quest is now glowing and I can go ahead and click on that to do my training. Now the training there always has nine drills. You can see them listed here. So every training step has nine drills and Ruzak will explain, or either Ruzak or a narrator will explain uh, the, what's currently happening in our quest, in our story, and uh, what we're preparing for. So to begin this drill, I simply would click on the drill, and Ruzak will explain to us which letters we're working on in this particular drill. So in this case, I'm st just starting, so it's the letter F, and, and it's only the letter F. So let's start that drill. And it's reminding us here uh, the, uh, what our home position of our keys are. So this is explaining proper typing technique where our fingers should be placed uh, lightly over the keys as you see them in the image below. This will maintain proper typing technique. And this is how we want to keep our hands as we type. So here's our drill with the, uh, the letter F's all ready to go. Uh, again, the gauntlet is showing which finger I should be using and where the F key is that I should press. Reminder that we have the help button that we can bring up at any time on any screen. And we have 15 seconds to do this drill. Let's go ahead and do that. So you can see I'm typing space FFF space FFF. And my words per minute is being tracked. Oh, I made a mistake. Let's use the backspace to correct that. Completed. Here we go. And uh, we got three stars, so that's great. That's the best that we can do. Uh, we have uh, words per minute was 26, so that's what our measure was. So uh, the game is going to reward your stars based on what the words per minute uh, goal you set. So it will adjust uh, intelligently based on 
uh, where you should be in this current stage of the quest and where you want to be with your end goal. Now if I click continue, it'll take me back to the drill screen. You can see my three stars that I've earned for that drill. And again, three is the most. I can earn uh, one, two, or three stars if I uh, achieve the drill. If I pass the drill, if I don't, I won't get any stars. If I do not pass the drill, I cannot continue. I do have to repeat the drill until I uh, pass it, until I get at least one star. And then I sequentially will do the drills in order until I complete all of them, and then I'll be prepared for my first challenge, which will be revealed on the map. I can return here at any time to improve uh, any drill and repeat any drill. So, for example, if I only got one star on drill two, I can come back and repeat drill two in order to improve the stars. And that's important because when I'm ready to do my next challenge um, that I was preparing for with these drills, uh, I'll also be rewarded uh, uh, with stars, one, two, or three stars. The maximum stars that I can get in a challenge is based on the maximum number of uh, stars that I was able to achieve in my drills. So for example, if I have three stars in all my drills here, but one star in drill two, then the most I can get on a challenge is only one star, because that's, that's the uh, lowest star rating that I have achieved. If I've got at least two stars on all my drills, at least two, then I can earn up to two stars on my challenge. In order to earn three stars in my challenge, I have to have three stars on all my drills and also do really well in the challenge in order to achieve the three stars there as well. So once we complete our drills, we can also return to the map and then the next part of the map will reveal itself. Let's take a look at the items at the bottom of the map. So while we're, uh, uh, while we're uh, performing our quest, we have access to a uh, list of achievements, which I showed earlier but also a performance report. So this is a very detailed report that shows how we're doing uh, every step of the way. So on this first screen that you see here, it shows all 49 levels. So the game has 49 levels, uh, nearly 500 uh, tasks and challenges uh, along the way. We also can see our skill test. So right here, it shows our, our skill test results and um, with the latest results were and the first time we ran the skill test so if you run it multiple times you'll see the first and the last uh, time you ran it and then I can use the arrows here to scroll down and see more details about each individual uh, task so I can see in task one my goal was 45 words per minute I needed to achieve at least 18 to pass the drill I actually achieved 26 and so I earned three stars. So I'll be able to scroll through this uh, performance report and see very, uh, very uh, all the details of each of my tasks and challenges. Now let's switch over to a map that actually has more of the uh, more of the tasks and the quest unlocked so we can see a bit more of what's happening. Okay so here we have a map with uh, more of the quest revealed and completed. In fact, you can see there's a, a second part of the map here that I can access by clicking the map button below. Before I show you some more of what's to come, let's take a look at uh, the menu button. So the menu button will allow you to save your game. Now, if you're using the online version, of GoVenture typing, then saving is done automatically. You don't need to use this button. Um, but if you do click it, it will just uh, immediately save your progress anyway, which is going to happen anyway. If you're using the, not, the offline version, um, then you do have to save your game using this button before you quit, because if you quit without saving, you'll lose uh, your progress, and you don't want that. So you want to make sure to save your game uh, before you quit, and often in between as well just in case anything were to happen uh, with your computer you don't want to lose your progress so save often using this button again you don't have to do that if you're using the online version you can access your performance report which I uh, you can also access directly from the map which I showed you earlier you can learn a little bit about the program and uh, our team who, did, who created it uh, you can quit the game completely if you like you can uh, click this button to adjust the volume of the background music and there's a separate button for sound effects so maybe you want the music off but leave the sound effects on 
uh, or perhaps both on or both off. The um, game is much more fun if you at least leave the sound effects on. And then we also have this option which is called finger position directions. If you turn this on, uh, what will happen is you'll hear a voice tell you which finger to use to click which key. So if you find that you're having trouble remembering which finger to use for which key, because remember using the right finger for the right key uh, provides you proper technique and good technique means you'll be able to type uh, more effortlessly and much faster. Um, but if you're having trouble uh, remembering which finger to use, you can turn on the finger pointing directions and you'll, have, you'll hear a voice actually tell you um, which finger to use and you can turn that on or off anytime. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, click close which will close this menu and bring us back uh, to the main map. And so you'll see um, uh, next to each um, of the uh, tasks you'll see a star and a number so it'll show you uh, if you've achieved that task and the number like in this case 27 out of 27 so I've earned 27 of the 27 stars uh, that I could possibly achieve. So this is all the stars, so I've maximized uh, this training. Uh, with the challenge, I got three out of three stars and so on. If I jump over to this challenge here, I only have one out of three stars, so I could have done uh, better there. And remember, the stars for the challenges are limited by uh, the number of stars I had in training. So if I want to maximize the stars I get in a challenge, I have to do two things. Number one is I have to maximize the stars in training, and number two, I have to do really well in the challenge also. Um, so, uh, so let's take a look at one quick challenge here. So challenge usually pits you in some type of battle or combat or a race or something uh, exciting that you have to do as a knight of the realm as part of your quest uh, to uh, achieve in this game. And so, in this case, this is the Fireball Challenge. And so here's Ruzak, and this is you, the Knight of the Realm, and uh, this is your caravan that you're traveling with, uh, that is, you know, helping you with supplies and so on on your quest. And the dragon, Morag, is going to rain fireballs upon you. And so what you have to do is use your keyboarding skills to stop Morag. Now notice before I start, everything's paused until I'm ready to begin. Uh, again, we have our help button that will uh, give us information on what's happening on screen, what I should do. If I want to give up on the task, I can click the retreat button, and I can always try again. I can always repeat any tasks as often as I like in, in order to improve my score. And along the bottom, I can see that I can earn up to three stars. And uh, remember, if, if my drills uh, were not uh, all three stars, and let's say one drill was two stars, then the maximum I'd see here would be two stars. I'd actually see a little red X crossed out one of the stars to kind of remind me that the reason I can't achieve three stars is because I wasn't as prepared in my drills. But three stars is the most that I can receive, and if I do really well here, I'll receive the three stars. So let's just get started on this challenge. So as you see the fireball is falling. As soon as it hits the area between uh, the wizard and myself, I want to click that letter. I don't want to click it too soon or too late. If I click it too late, the fireball will hit my caravan, and that's not good. If I click it too soon, I will uh, not be able to destroy the fireball. Let's let, let's let a couple go through and see what happens. So you'll notice as the fireballs go through, I'm starting to lose stars. And if I let too many go through, I will and I'm defeated. And I can read more about uh, the story as I, as I go along. So let's return to the map. And again, I can repeat that challenge as I repeat any of the other challenges. Once I reveal all five sections of the map, eventually I will end, I get to the end of my quest and I'll have a choice. I'll have a choice of either attacking uh, the dragon and trying to put him down once and for all and win the game or I'll have the option of doing some bonus uh, bonus tasks, bonus challenges. And the, the challenges are actually a, a prequel to our story and it'll give us some background on how we became a knight. And if I, uh, I do those additional bonus challenges, I'll learn some additional uh, keys on the keyboard uh, like, this, uh, like the special characters and, and so on. So they're optional but certainly very helpful and 
and you might find it very interesting to learn more about your backstory and your prequel of how you became uh, this knight of the realm on this quest. So we'll stop there. That is, uh, that is GoVenture typing. We hope you'll find it fun and interesting and that it will improve your typing skills because that's one of the most productive uh, things you can do that will save you a lot of time at work and at home and in your life. So thanks for playing GoVenture typing. And